Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we're looking at Rivian. Rivian owners can now use the Tesla superchargers. NACS ports are coming to the new Rivians in 2025, as EV maker turned to Tesla to ease range anxiety for owners. And this has been happening for quite some time, and the simplest thing that this tells us about the industry of electric vehicles, Tesla is the leader, of course, as well known, but other automakers are publicly admitting now that Tesla has the best charger network available or else why would you use it so this is really great for tesla because something that tesla has made popular is something that has been made mainstream at the moment that a lot of ev makers are actually transitioning to nacs ports and this makes a lot of sense to be honest it makes a lot of sense that most vehicles are using the same port if not similar it will simplify it will simplify a lot of things in the EV space, especially when it comes to vehicles, charging. So Rivian has integrated its billing system into the supercharger network, offering plug-in and charge capabilities. NAC ports will be installed in the new Rivian model starting in 2025. Starting this week, Rivian owners will have access to Tesla Supercharger, of course. With Rivian being one of the nearly two dozen automakers, that had revealed plan last summer to adopt Tesla North American charging standard, of course. This means over 15,000 superchargers will be open to Rivian owners, with the automaker saying it will start distributing NACS DC adapters in April free of charge. But those who have the CCS to NACS adapters at the moment can begin using the network with plug and charge convenience. Rivian has already integrated its billing system, of course. Now, Rivian did make a statement, and I quote, Because we handle our charging hardware and software in-house, we can seamlessly integrate most fast chargers, including the supercharger network, into our charging ecosystem. End quote. This article went on to say the superchargers will also start showing up on Rivian's navigation systems, making it easier to plan trips. Starting in 2025, Rivian plans to integrate NACS now, of course, we know that they will be integrating the NACS ports in 2025, but to be more specific, this will be included in the recently revealed Rivian R2 and the R3 models that will arrive in 2026 and 2027. Rivian also invested in building its own charger network, dubbed the Rivian Adventure Network. And to be honest, I do like the Rivian Adventure Network. Never used it, but I like the idea of it, that Rivian, the entire company, is centered around an adventure. Almost everything Rivian related is all an idea of you having an adventure with your vehicle. So I really like the way how they're marketing their products, how they're standing out as a brand, something different from what other EV makers are willing to offer. This is good. This is variation. Now, just for the exclusive use of Rivian owners with plans for a total of 3,500 fast chargers, yet another network being built by the EV maker is dubbed Rivian Wavepoints and it's designed to be accessible to all EV owners, albeit offering slower charging speed. This is very interesting. I've never actually looked into this Rivian Wavepoint, but perhaps it's time I do check out what exactly this is. So what are Rivian Waypoints chargers? So it looks like Rivian has a page on their website that is kind of dedicated to answering this question. And it's quite extensive because if you look in here, apparently the Rivian Adventure Networks are these triple lightning bolt green bubbles. And the Rivian Waypoint Network is the single lightning bolt in the bubble. So those are the waypoints. So that's very interesting, actually. This map also goes further in explaining that the Rivian Adventure Network is coming soon to the areas that are painted in yellow. And of course, the green bubbles, those are the compatible Tesla supercharger. I probably shouldn't say green bubble. A lot of people, you use iPhone and you're in the US. So you probably don't like green bubbles. Now, the US is a huge place. This might look like a lot of charger networks for, for Rivian, but it's actually not as many as you might think. But it's actually really good that Rivian is building out two different charger networks. That's actually, it's not a concept that's practiced widely. And it's only when you're looking at these maps, you can really appreciate the closeness that Canada has to the US. I mean, it's, it's kind of wow. That's, that's New York, 
quite literally. I've heard of Rochester, actually. And really close by, you've got um, Buffalo, you've got Hamilton, and if I'm not mistaken, you've got Detroit on the other side. But in between all of this, you should have Toronto somewhere. So basically, that's Toronto next to Hamilton. Yeah, it doesn't show up on this map for some reason. But you can never really appreciate just how close they are. I mean, I know, it's in the US. This is not as close as it looks. It's a lot further away than it looks. So it's explained in here that Rivian waypoints are level two, charged and located near shopping centers, restaurants, hotel parks, and other popular destinations. We have more than 10,000 Rivian rave points scheduled to be built across the US and Canada. These charging sites will be open to public and have a J1772 plug, making them compatible with other electric vehicles as well. Charging rates and speed will vary depending on the site. You'll be able to find and navigate to charge in locations directly from your touchscreen. This is quite interesting. Now, I do wonder, will Rivian adapt to certain technology for these charge points, for these wave points? A company that we don't hear a lot about anymore. Volta is a very interesting company that, unfortunately, we just don't hear that much about Volta anymore. Now, of course, this company was bought by Shell. Yeah, I definitely don't think it's traded anymore, but it is owned by by Shell officially now parent company Shell but apparently now it has some some subsidiaries Volta Charging Volta Media Volta Industry Volta Charging Services so I didn't actually know about these subsidiaries so this might have been a new addition to the Volta company but the Volta company website is still active so I still think they're partaking in what the company intends to do and what this company does they offer free charging with advertisements. There I'm wondering, would Rivian consider something similar to this? Because Volta is no longer on the market to invest in. And I really liked investing in Volta. So if I wanted to invest in Volta, I would have to invest in Shell, in the Shell company directly. Headquarter in London. It's a UK company. I didn't always know Shell was a UK company, but it is a UK company. But there's different version of Shells. There's Shell USA, of course. But the parent company is the UK company. Very interesting. Never thought in my life that Shell was a UK company. I think it's probably the largest company in the in the UK, surprisingly. So yes, that's the option. If I wanted to buy, buy into Shell, that's the option. If I wanted to buy into Volta, I would have to buy into Shell. So the Shell business, is it transitioning into more charging services? Of course. Maybe it wants to diversify what it has as a business. Now to continue with this article. So that's pretty much it from this from this article. But it's very interesting. Lots of updates to charger networks and to what's now available to the Rivian customers. I didn't know Rivian had two different charging station companies or providing multiple different options. This is a unique proposition from an EV company. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to see more. Leave a like, leave a comment, and I'll see you in our next video. Peace.